Okay, so... What do I want to talk about? Oh yeah, I know. Uh, so I was um, looking online last night, I saw a picture of a protester. Uh, and her sign... Her sign, I assume it's her. Sign, uh, said, My pronouns are not up for debate. I'm like, okay. I like to do this thing with protesters called the time traveler test. And I, I encourage all protesters who are going to write signs to do the time traveler test as well. If a time traveler were to come from the past to the future and see your sign, would it make sense to them? And depending on how far back you go, to the point where, say, a hundred years ago, some a time traveler from a hundred years ago were to come forward and see the sign, my pronouns are not up for debate. Would it make any sense? Would he even understand what it meant? And the answer yes or no is an indication of one thing, one or two, one of two things. Either it's either a good sign or a bad sign. If your sign doesn't use plain language. And I mean plain universal language. I mean language that spans generations. Then it's a bad sign. The only people who understand, who, who can understand my pronouns are not up for debate are ones who are exposed to the current debate over Bill C-16 here in Canada and the idea of, uh, you know, gendered, non-gendered, funky pronouns. So only those who live in this context understand this context would, would understand it. Somebody from uh, the developing world who never even heard this argument wouldn't know what the fuck you were talking about. So in that sense, that sign is a bad sign. But another indicator of a sign like that is uh, how relevant is your protest if you compare it to what people fought for in ages past? Right? In the 1960s, People fought for civil rights so that blacks in the United States would be treated equally under the law. So the blacks in the United States would have equal access. Um, the whole my pronouns are not up for debate thing is it sort of spits in the face of people who protested over actual problems in the world, actual injustices. And it's, uh, it's, it's quite telling that, you know, that the left have really lost any credibility in grievance when what they're arguing about is what pronouns other people use. And, and here's a point. The whole, my pronouns are not up for debate, the idea that you can control somebody else's speech. Look, the only pronouns that you have any control over are the pronouns me and I. And I guess if you want to concern myself to be a pronoun, I guess that's kind of a pronoun. Myself is a pronoun. Those are the only ones. And those are gendered. Those aren't gendered. Those are gender neutral. Anyone can say them. But what somebody you don't have control over what somebody else says, how someone else refers to you. And if you get offended because you dress up like a, if you're a man who dresses up like a woman, but you don't shave and you don't take hormone blockers, and you don't really put the effort in, and someone says that guy, or calls you he instead of she, you got nothing to complain about. Sorry, but if you if you make an effort to pass for the gender that you wish to be or you imagine yourself to be, I will call you she. And I mean an effort. I don't mean you put on a dress. Because a transvestite is not a transgender. Blair White looks like a woman. Blair White is a transgender woman. Male to female. She puts in the effort. She's gone through the... She's gone through, she's gone through the gauntlet. She's run the gauntlet in order to... to earn that... I guess... courtesy. 
But even still, if somebody wanted to be a douchebag and call Blair White a he, Blair White can't do anything about it except stop talking to the person because they're being rude. You don't have any control over your what someone else says. I know that Bill 16 would like to make that, and I, and I should have kept on up on it. I don't. Uh, I don't know if it, if it passed. I believe it did, but I don't know. The idea that people's speech can be controlled by somebody else, by somebody who's aggrieved, is a is a very very bad precedent. Uh, Jordan Peterson was on, I believe it was CTV News Sunday or CTV Sunday. Maybe it was CBC Sunday. I don't know. And he was speaking to a university sociology uh, talking head regarding gendered pronouns and the idea of gender as a social construct and, and that sort of thing. And I mean, I like Jordan Peterson. He's he knows what he's talking about. He is articulate. He speaks with some authority. And he's absolutely right on this issue. He, um, when, when he says to the guy, look, there is a biological basis for gender. And, and the, the sociologist just flips his lid and goes, and can't articulate why that's wrong. He's been so inculcated into this postmodernist philosophy that he can't even come back with an argument. He even went so far as to say, I don't have time. This is not the forum to discuss the level nuance of gender and culture. And I'm like, this is exactly the forum. You're, you're sitting on a panel on a Sunday morning talk show that's an hour long and there's no there's nothing stopping you from articulating your point. The fact is you can articulate your point and you can't argue your point because you've been living in this bubble that is academia for so long that you've never had your point of view challenged. What's worse is you discourage students from challenging your point of view and you discourage students from questioning the dogma and I'm sorry, you know, I'm, it's been years since I was in post-secondary, but uh, that's what it is. Academic institutions, when they're teaching classes that end in studies, uh, or classes that uh, of a sociological nature, uh, they are, they're disseminating dogma. They are not teaching students valuable skills, they're not teaching students alternative ways of thinking. They're teaching students one way of thinking, one way of looking at the world. It's collectivist, cultural Marxist nonsense that puts everybody into the oppressed or oppressor class uh, based on race, based on gender, based on uh, sexual, sexual preference or sexual orientation. It's garbage. So... I really wish I kept up on, on media in Canada because I live in Canada. Um, but I've just been so absorbed in what's going on in the United States right now and what's going on in Europe. And it's, it's kind of, I don't know, it's kind of a self-destructive kind of mindset for me because I'm watching Europe implode. I'm watching the United States go through this ridiculous election turmoil. And in Canada, there's all sorts of garbage, terrible things happening uh, in terms of, you know, government overreach. And I'm not really paying attention. I'm only paying attention sort of tertiarily, I'm only seeing the edges of it because I, because I, I like rebel media but I hate Ezra Levant's voice. I mean, I, I, I appreciate what he says. I side with a lot of what he says. But 
God damn it, he's got a terrible voice. He's got a very annoying voice. I, Gavin McGinnis is hilarious. And, uh, and I like watching his videos quite a bit. I like Lauren Southern, too. And they've got that new guy. I can't remember his name. Um, damn it, I wish I remember his name. Sheila Gunry, Faith, Faith, what's her name? Faith Goldie. Uh, they've got a lot of great correspondents and a lot of great presenters on Rebel Media. I just wish that it wasn't behind a paywall. I mean, it's not that much money, but I'm so used to getting so much stuff on YouTube for free that I don't really want to pay for it. I should though, I mean, I should support the channel. There's nothing wrong with supporting it and then canceling it if I don't like the content. The only, the only problem I have is there's a couple of people who present on there that I'm not really that fond of. And it's not, it's nothing personal against them, it's just their presentation style. As though a band is one, I don't like his voice. What he says, a lot of times I agree with, but I don't like his voice. David the Menzoid Menzies. David Menzies. Um, it's not so much his voice as it is his attempt at polish. Um, he's a little marble-mouthed. He, he, he stumbles across his words a fair bit. I mean, I'm not perfect. I stumble on my words as well. But um, you can tell he's trying to get it out without stumbling. And it comes off as having a little bit of try hard. You know? Um, but uh, but those two, I mean, that's that's primarily it. And I mean, it's Ezra Levan's channel, so he's on it quite a bit. And I don't know. I guess it's worth worth it for seeing Lawrence Southern and uh, hearing Gavin McInnes. But Gavin McInnes uploads stuff all the time and he's also on the Kubia network so if I really want to watch his stuff I can get it on YouTube. Uh, I guess I should support alternative media in Canada especially considering you know, their argument that the CBC and left-wing media, left-wing news media, left-wing journalism dominates Canadian media and it's true, it kind of does. Um, what's it uh, Stephen Colbert used to say? Reality has a liberal bias. I don't know if the reality has a liberal bias, but um, the public consciousness has a liberal bias because the liberal viewpoint on a lot of things sounds really, really nice. It sounds... It sounds like what decent people think. An analysis of it really shows to go that it's actually utopian garbage. And it imagines the world in, in a state that it's not in and not likely to ever be. It's also predicated on collectivism. The idea that we are a society first and individuals second. I don't, I don't side with that. But anyway, pulling into work, can't really talk about things much more. Those are my thoughts on stuff. And uh, that's all I gotta say.